Hello, this is Mr. Huber. In this lesson, we're going to learn about some properties of exponents. Okay, remember, an exponent is a number or a variable, or some base raised to a power. So we can see it here. In this case, the x is the base, the 4 is the power or the exponent. Remember, we have something raised to a power. That's how many times the base is being multiplied by itself. So x to the fourth means x is being multiplied by itself four times. Okay, so remember. A power is not multiplying the x by 4, it's multiplying the x by itself that many times. So let's look at x to the 4th times x to the 3rd. x to the 4th would be 4x's multiplied together. x to the 3rd would be 3x's multiplied together. So we can see here we have a string of 7 now x's being multiplied together, which would be the same as x to the 7th. We can get that without having to write out all these x's each time by knowing the property here, when we multiply like bases, we add the exponents. So x to the 4th times x to the 3rd is x to the 4 plus 3, x to the 7th. Here's the general rule for that. Again, with the same base, as long as these are both x, both 5, both q, both negative 8, okay, as long as the base is the same, the x is the base, so when the bases are the same and we're multiplying, we add the exponents. Whatever the m and n are, we'd add them together, like we did up here. So the product of powers. So when we're multiplying product, the powers get added together. Then we have a power of a power. So we have a power raised to another power. What does that mean? x squared to the third. Well, x squared would be x squared, x squared, x squared times itself three times because the parentheses here, the parentheses are important. Everything in the parentheses is to this third power. So that would be x squared times x squared times x squared, that's x to the sixth, or power of a power, we multiply the two powers together, two times three. x to the two times three would be how we'd get x to the sixth. So we have a power raised to another power, we multiply the two powers together to have our new exponent. Again, that base has stayed the same. And now we have the property for a power of a product. So we can see here, we have a product in the parentheses, this whole product is raised to the third power. So, you know, we could write that out the long way. And we want to see that's x times x times x, y times y times y. Write that x to the third and y to the third. Three x's, three y's. We don't want to have to write those out the long way every time. So when we have a product raised to a power. We can take each factor in that product to that particular power. So x, y to the m, we'd have x to the m power times y to the m power. You'll note, this is a product in here, not a sum. This does not work. This is one of the more common mistakes with powers. If you have x plus y to the m, that is not equal to x to the m plus y to the m. Okay? These are not equal. So when we have a product all raised to the same power. Each of those factors can be raised to that power. And we're going to see what these look like now with some actual examples. So remember our three properties we saw here, the power of a product property, then we have the power of a power. When we have a power raised to another power, multiply those exponents together. And we're multiplying like bases. We can add their exponents to get the new power for that. So we have some practice problems here. Let's try these out. Okay, we're just going to write these using exponents. Our final answer should be simplified. We shouldn't, have a, we shouldn't have any bases repeated, and we should just have them to some power. So in our first example here, right, we can see 3 squared times 3 to the 7th, we have the same base, the 3 and the 3 are the same base, so we're multiplying them, we add the exponents together. We have 3 to the 2 plus 7 is 3 to the 9th. The one below it here, number 2, we have a power raised to another power. Right? This is an exponent raised to another exponent, so we're going to multiply them together. And the parentheses here are important. The negative 2 in parentheses is important. We need negative 2 as our base in parentheses to the 15th power. That is different than negative 2 to the 15th power. If you don't try, believe me, try them in your calculator. If you want a smaller number, you can put that in your calculator, smaller numbers. You want to be careful when you're raising things to powers and they're negative in your calculator. Negative 4 squared is not the same as negative 4 squared. Again, maybe that's an easier one to put in your calculator and try it out. This is going to come out as negative 16 because the only thing we're squaring here is the 4. 4 squared is 16 and the negative sign doesn't change. Here we're taking negative 4 times negative 4. We multiply a negative times a negative, we get positive 16. You can see those are not the same. So be careful with parentheses. 
when you have negative bases raised to some power. It's very important. Pay attention to those parentheses. Right. We see an example here. R to the fourth times R to the sixth times R. Three bases that are the same. Okay. So if we multiply just these first two together, that'd be R to the tenth times R. And now we want to recognize here, this R is to the first power. If we don't write an exponent, there's a power of one. So this would be R to the eleventh. Right, we can add the 4, the 6, and the 1. Okay, so we'd add the 4, the 6, and the 1 together, add those together, and we'd get r to the 11th. Now, in number 4, we have a product in the parentheses. Each piece of that product is going to be raised to the 4th power. Everything in parentheses to the 4th power. m to the 12th, n to the 4th. Okay, remember to multiply. 3 times 4 is 12. There's a 1 here times 4, n to the 4th, and that would be our final answer. If we were writing this out as we go forward, we may want to take 3 to the 4th power and write that out as 81, m to the 12th, n to the 4th. Okay, this is the same thing as 81, m to the 12th, n to the 4th. And so it just depends on what the directions are asking for. It says simplify using exponents, so we can just write as exponents because we're learning about those properties of exponents, and then we'll be able to simplify a little bit as we go forward. A little tasty trivia. Maybe you saw it coming up here at the bottom of the screen. What condiment was once sold as a medicine? So condiments, like something you add on your food, some sauces, spices, things along those lines. Okay, The condiment that was a medicine was ketchup. It was originally used as a medicine in the United States. In 1830s, it was sold under many different uh, brands, but one by Dr. John Cook Bennett. He sold it as uh, tomato pills, actually, as well. It was believed to help with indigestion, and because it was fermented, people found that things that had been fermented usually had medicinal benefits, especially um, in China and some other countries. They would ferment things to uh, help with uh, medical ailments. So uh, it didn't last long. By the 1850s, uh, this business was uh, gone, and it became a condiment instead of a medicine. Um, I said tasty trivia, but quite honestly, I don't like ketchup myself. I think it tastes medicinal. As it is, I don't like it. I'll take mustard 10 times out of 10 over ketchup. But, hey, maybe you do like ketchup. Interesting to note, it started as a medicine. I'm not sure if it's helping you health-wise or not, but go ahead and enjoy it if you like. All right, now we've got some more guided practice problems. You should try these yourself. These are like the ones we saw before. These are using those properties. So pause the video, try these problems. After you've done them, play it and see how you've done. Okay, so I assume you've paused the video and tried the problems. Yeah, you. If you haven't, pause it now, try the problems, then press play when you've done them yourself. All right, let's walk through these. So number five here. In parentheses, everything in that product in parentheses is raised to the second power. So negative three, if we're going to write it as an exponent, would be negative three in parentheses squared. Okay, or if we want to multiply negative three times itself and square it, we'd get positive nine. They would have h to the sixth, g squared. So it's okay for this problem whether you have it as negative 3 in parentheses squared or 9 because you square the negative 3, but make sure if you do have it as negative 3 squared, it's in parentheses. All right, number 6, and parentheses are important here. We want to have negative 3 as the base in parentheses to the eighth power. We have a power raised to another power. We multiply them together. 4 times 2 would be now the eighth power. And number 7, Again, parentheses important here. Negative 3 to the 4th power. We have a 3 and there's a 1 here. There's an exponent of 1, so the like bases, we add their exponents together, negative 3 to the 4th power. All right. In this next example, number 8. So we have a power raised to a power here. So we're going to have y plus 2, in parentheses, to the 18th power, 6 times 3. And you do not... Right? You do not want to take the 18th power and raise everything in here to the 18th power. That is not accurate. We talked about that on one slide. Do not do that. This is a sum, not a product. So this answer would just stay as we see it here. That would be our final answer. Y plus 2 is our base to the 18th power. In this next example, let's start off with just simplifying this first part here. All right, so we have a negative. That doesn't change. The negative is not being squared. The 7 is squared, that'd be 49 x to the 6th. Okay, 7 squared would be 49, and now times x to the 4th. 
So now when we multiply these, it's going to be negative 49 x to the 10th. We can add the exponents together because we have like bases. Okay, we have the base x and x. When we multiply those, we add their exponents together. Let's try another one here. So first, we're going to simplify each of the parentheses by themselves. So first, right here, okay, if we have a negative, this would be like negative 1 in front of that to the fifth power. Okay, if you take a negative number to an odd power, it's going to stay negative. So we're going to have negative x to the fifth. Or if you have negative 1 in parentheses to the fifth power, that's fine. y to the tenth, z to the fifteenth. And now we're going to take this second parentheses here. Okay, so it's going to be times 4 squared is 16. Or again, if you have it at 4 squared, that's fine. x to the 8th, y squared, z squared. Remember, the y and z are both to the first power. So 1 times 2 right, would be now the second power. And now I can multiply all this together. So I have negative 1 times 16 is negative 16. My like base is x to the 5th times x to the 8th. So I'm multiplying a base of x times a base of x. I add their exponents together, be x to the 13th. y to the 12th, z to the 17th. And that would be our final answer. Right, so take it one step at a time. Remember those properties. When you're multiplying like bases, add their exponents. We saw that like here. Multiplying the x times the x. Same base, I added the exponents. Okay? When you have a power raised to another power, like we saw here, we have fourth power to the second power. So we have negative 3 now to the 4 times 2, 8th power. When you have a power raised to another power, multiply those powers together. And when you have a product, everything in the product that's in the parentheses is raised to whatever that power is. So we had 7 to the 2nd power, x to the 3rd to the 2nd power here. Everything in these parentheses to the 5th power. Everything in these parentheses in this product to the 2nd power. Right, so you have those three properties of exponents that we're working on involving products in some way. Make sure you're able to practice those, you're paying attention to when we are adding exponents when we multiply like bases, and we're taking a power to power and multiplying them. Pay attention to those parentheses when they're needed, when we have especially have a negative number raised to some power, as you get opportunities to practice properties of exponents involving products.